Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Trumpeter Jeremy Pell tonight is performing selections off his latest High Note Records release, Soul. And this project's a little different than some of his other projects, and one that he's really, really tightening his composition skills and two he's playing a lot for the lovers there's a lot of beautiful beautiful ballads on this disc tonight we're going to sit down and talk about the new record we're going to talk about where he is musically we're also going to talk about him as far as an educator i know he takes part of many 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 jazz programs as far as jazz mobile reaching out to the younger generation teaching the music of jazz as well as performs with a lot of jazz legacy bands including the Mingus big band here at the jazz standard as well as the cannonball Adderley legacy band featuring the legendary drummer Lewis Hayes so sit back relax and enjoy the sounds of mr. Jeremy Pelt live here at the jazz standard here in New York City <laughs> This is uh, a beautiful romantic record, and then also I noticed that you're going a little blues on this route too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the way that I look at it, it's a ballads and blues record with a contemporary edge to it. What was the concept of this record? I mean, it seems like this is a different departure from your last record, Men of Honor. Well, the last record was uh, The Talented Mr. Pelt. Um, it was to revisit my ballads and blues playing from a, a, a different standpoint in my life. I mean, when I did Close to My Heart, which was my other ballads record, that was almost 10 years ago. And while I really, that record stands in time as a, as a great record, and you know, if I may say so myself, um, I think this one, uh, it comes from a deeper part of, of, of my soul, really. And uh, at this point in my career, I think it was time to, to go ahead and uh, do that. So that's why I really wanted to focus on, on these, this type of material. Because I noticed this record, you wrote probably about 75% of the music on this, and then you got two standards on this record. Yeah, well, I have uh, one standard, and I wrote uh, pretty much everything except for the, the George Cable song, which was it, it, one of those songs. It's, it's, that kind of song that reaches out to your soul 
and I just had to have it. You know, and I called George. I said, George, I mean, he was in Japan. I'm like, email, I'm trying to track him down. I said, man, can I please record your song? Because I always ask people if I can record their songs. And, and he was all about it. I haven't spoken to him since it came out, but, uh, you know, hopefully he digs it. And uh, with the standard, I just, I, I think it's always been my quote-unquote thing to try and find material that hadn't been recorded uh, an awful lot. And with a song like Moon Drift, which I originally heard on uh, the uh, Lurleen Hunter's uh, disc from, you know, the mid-50s, that song always stuck out to me. It's a gorgeous Sammy Kahn melody. Jeremy, you know, at your age, your interpretation of ballads is pretty steep. I mean, it seems like today a lot of the younger musicians just want to blow hard and be heard, but this is a very heartfelt recording. Yeah, well, I mean, you touched on something. I mean, it, it, that, again, naming close to my heart as an... Uh, the, the the I guess the the start of my being cognizant about the lyrics of songs, I really kind of dug into the content of what I was playing in order to to be more emotive. And you're right. I mean, it does seem like a lot of younger players are wanting to blow hard, and that's that's just a young instinct, anyhow. And you can't really say anything bad about it. I mean, because that's ex what's expected. I mean, if you even look. In the, the the history of trumpet players that come up, certainly you know Lee Morgan and Freddie Hubbard and all these people, you know stick out as people that just came out there and they were blowing hard all the time. So I mean it it goes it comes with your youth, but then what happens is the older you get, um, you start to really refine that and, and start to ask yourself what do I have to prove, and that's where I'm at right now. I don't feel like I have to to play like I did, you know, 10, 15 years ago because I've already been out here. And those cats that are young that are still playing like that do have something to prove. <laughs> educator now and um, your role has changed from musician band leader to going behind the scenes and nurturing the next generation of musicians those are some heavy roles to fulfill at your age yeah well somebody's got to do it <laughs> no, truth truth be told I've been doing this for quite some time but I just hadn't had the the, the the title of professor. I mean, there are, you know, some trumpet players out there right now that I remember 
when they first moved to New York and I was always they would always be up in my house, you know, and I'd have some some helpful tips, you know, that they could either leave or take away. So I mean, I've always tried to pass on as many lessons as I could that I've learned from opportunities that they would not otherwise get. And now in this particular sense, now that I'm a professor of uh, trumpet over at uh, the Hart School, Jack McLean's Institute, uh, it just, uh, I guess, further validates that it just puts a title on it, really. What is it like, you know, being an instructor there? Because Jackie's vision for that program was pretty much at the time when he started it was kind of ahead of its time. Yeah, well, it definitely was ahead of its time. Um, always in the educational realm, what I'm seeing right now is you're going to see your students that are ultra- uh, hyper and, and very motivated about learning and then you'll see some that are slackers and that's that's the situation that I'm in right now uh, so it's it can be a rewarding experience it's always rewarding to see the light bulb in somebody's head go off and then they, they put it together that's that's the rewarding experience you know the unrewarding experience would be sitting there teaching you know people that don't even have a light bulb, you know, so it's just like, all right, whatever, you know, and some people will look at it as a worthy challenge to get them to get the light bulb, which, you know, I wish I had that much patience, and I should, I mean, I've got a two and a half year old, and I have, I've allotted that patience for him. <laughs> I feel sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of times I feel like at 22, 21, you know, 19 years old, you should really, if you have a healthy interest in it, you should really be starting to build the curiosity a little bit further, if not, if you're not there already. What is your state of jazz studies right now? Because there's been a controversy with, you know, jazz is dead and yada, yada, yada. I don't want to go into that few, mm -hmm. but you're in a situation now to make a very big difference in how people see this music and how it's perceived and also how people study it and how it's played. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in terms of education, I really just try to stick to what is is true about the music, and I and I and I what I try to do is I try to impart to the student uh, a level of patience, which is ironic that I'm talking about patience, the lack of patience in myself. But realistically, in the student, they have to have the patience because what happens is. Uh, Cats start to read the downbeat, and they start to see people that are closer and closer to their age making it. So they want it, but they're not really prepared for it yet. But so they, a lot of times, leave the nest very unprepared. And what I want to do is I want to make sure they are prepared before they leave the nest. I got to say, when I left Berkeley, I was very prepared to move to New York. You know, and the wonderful thing about having moved here and being prepared is that I was also very open to change and change you could accept a lot easier when you have the foundation and that's and that's what I'm trying to impart to the student <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
this rhythm section. I really have. I can't complain. <laughs> I mean, and I think that you, you're in this, uh, this. If I'm gonna take it to to basketball, you're in this Phil Jackson mind state. If it don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why fix it? Why fix? It? You know, I'm. I, you know, look, I come from the tail end, the very tail end of a generation uh, that was influenced by the generation before them. And I actually, you know, and I'm talking about the generation, you know, bef directly before me as well as the generation from the 40s and 50s that really be believed in being loyal to their band. And there will be times where I'd be in some bands led by some very notable musicians where I felt like, you know, some of the members of the band were weak. And I'd be like, why does, I mean, and then there will be like some times where the weak member couldn't make a gig so they got somebody else and that other person was so strong. I'm like, we need to have him in the band. But, you know, the, the leader was like, no, we're going to stick with this, you know, and that that really spoke to me. Now, in this particular situation, this isn't that situation. Everybody is very strong, and I don't want to mess with that at all. You know, it pains me every time I have to have uh, substitutes, such as tonight, you know, I have two substitutes, but they're very worthwhile substitutes. But, I mean, it still does something to... The, the vibe of the overall vibe of the band. to do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Jeremy Pelt for his time, as well as the wonderful staff and management here at the Jazz Standard. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column, as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.